1911 grips that my favorite to mess around with. I love uh, messing around, changing out uh, grips, and uh, all of the grips that you could mess with. 1911s are my favorite by far. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run through some stuff. This is my collection of grips that I got. Uh, not everything, but just some stuff I dragged out that I thought was kind of unique that I had access to at the time. Most of my stuff scattered all over the place. So um, anyway, uh, it, where we are at the location here, we had these uh, available. So we we're going to go ahead and photograph these and check them out. Talk a little bit about them. So uh, with the 1911, that's what's cool about them. The grips can really uh, change everything and it can make it something pop off or it can make it look pretty dull and tasteless and uh, you know you, then that's what's cool you can add your own flavor to it by checking out what your grips are alright so we got some vintage grips and some uh, grips I made and things like that so actually starting off which is my favorite um, these are legit Colt factory grips they're fully checkered there's no diamonds on them and meaning that uh, there's no diamonds around the, uh, the screw holes right here as you would have seen in early days of World War One and such. All right, now these are my favorites that uh, Colt had done. Really, uh, one of my favorites. There, they uh, they came off of the Series 70 guns during the 70s. Another example of those would be what they called the barn siding grips. And the reason why they called them that, or the bark grips, uh, they were basically the same, but they weren't checkered. They were just uh, flat, flat sides like that. You can see that it looks like they just pulled some paneling off of an old barn and made grips out of them. You know, that's kind of what I guess I got. They got their name. Uh, during the time when they came out, they were rather tasteless. People kind of pulled them off and uh, put some other ones on there, Packmire or whatnot. So, uh, causing a lot of these to get they're, they're very expensive now, and a lot of times. So, it's really interesting to see how they've transitioned and how a lot of these become expensive. A lot of times you get them, they're pretty oil soaked and and whatnot so I got a couple of pairs that are you know pretty pristine here's one that's actually still in the Colt package these are pretty nice I think if I'm not mistaken these are called the bird's eye maple and they're they're Colt factory grips I believe there they can they came in the bag I bought them uh, I think these are pretty pretty expensive now alt mount makes some that are kind of a throwback you got the uh, diamonds that I was talking about there, and you have a medallion that they put in there. Now these are rosewood. These are pretty classic, uh, standard ones. Uh, the World War One grips, I don't have any because I've seen a lot of them for sale. Problem is, there's no way to, to really know if they're legit. And they cost a lot of money, and there's so many reproductions of them, and they're really so plain. They're basically this grip minus the, that medallion. And people say you can count the lines and the in the crossing of the uh, the checkering and all that. I really don't get. I just it's just too much uh, craziness. You know where you're talking about one single line could cost you an extra hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. I mean when you're dealing with that kind of money, I'm, I start to get a little gun shy about it. Now a transitional grip, as we know here, World War II would have seen these. And these are the kind of, uh, I guess, keys, grips. They're Bakelite. You can see this one has a star on the back of it. There. No focus there. But uh, these here are your typical uh, World War II A1 grips that they, you know, that you would have seen on them. Uh, they do have a different... I know how silly that sounds. I, I remember watching some videos you guys are talking about that. They have a certain sound to them. Well, when you cling them together and I mean at first I thought it was kind of a, a joke but uh, there's some truth to that now a transition before that uh, and I believe these are popping on the uh, the 1911 and 41 ish um, prior to that they actually were wood and here's a set of really rare uh, wood pre pre World War II um, grips right here and those are wood those came off the early early uh, 1911s so that basically they're same grips only they're wood and notice also they do not have the reinforcement uh, bushings around them in a sense like like that it has like a reinforcement there notice how this does not yeah, so that that's kind of neat all right so moving on to like uh, my my kind of personal taste and some of my stuff um, I'm a really big fan of the skip checker grips such as like these or more classic wise you've probably seen more stuff like those now these are the the um 
the skip checkering grips that you saw. Uh, I kind of I grew up with a lot of the old Seagal movies and whatnot, so you can see a lot of these featured on Steven Seagal's 1911s as he predominantly kind of used a lot of those during his uh, career <laughs> out of his movies, and, you know, so throughout all of them. But uh, I've, I've kind of really grown uh, attached to those type of grips. I, I've got to rock a lot of them on my 1911s. And, uh, of course, here's a, a take on that I did. Now, the, these I made uh, of the World War I style grips, but I wanted to add a little bit of more of a, a, a depth and flavor to it. And, of course, keeping with that uh, kind of reddish-brown grips. And, of course, you got uh, Colt during the 50s. We're doing uh, this style of a grip, which is kind of the, uh, uh, the they're pretty much a World War One or I mean World War Two style phenolic uh, resin grips, but they have uh, added the emblem into them. So a lot of these um, that you go and find at gun shows and whatnot, they're going to be uh, they they cost a lot of money and a lot of times they shrunk and they're not going to fit on the on the 1911 it's just not going to fit on your frame so that's kind of a bummer on that you're kind of if you get involved in those they're going to be kind of a that's going to be the the downside you know they're probably not going to fit and you're investing a lot of money i've seen them go for some really stupid money um but you're investing into something that's probably going to uh you know shrink away and, and uh, eventually become kind of you know useless you know, you're not going to be able to use them, and they're just going to kind of sit, in, you know, I mean, there's no way to stop the the uh, shrinkage. And I've seen them where they shrink so bad that even when they're on the 1911 frame, that they're pulling away from the escutcheons here, and they're just, you know, cracking or whatnot. Escutcheons, escutcheons, however you want to say it. But uh, anyway, I just figured I'd roll through this and uh, show you a few grips and some of my favorites. Of course, you know, I love the uh, skip checker grips and I love the, uh, the old school 50s retro grips as I got on my, uh, my Colt Classic there. So anyway, uh, there's kind of a rundown of some Colt grips mostly, but uh, in a sense, you can toss those on anything and, and you know, a lot of times I do. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Batchek JW.